Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. It is your fellow story nerd, Miguel Baltazar, here with another episode of El Lacta Podcast. Thank you so much, Nicole. Uh, probably the podcast you guys forgot about because the last episode aired like a year ago. But here we are again uh, with another great episode. Here I have a very, very, very special guest. Uh, I want to introduce her very quickly. Um, so obviously we have uh, Nicole Lozano Horst. Is that how you want me to? Yeah, that's fine. Introduce you guys. Okay, yeah, because you're you're married now to a wonderful man named Chad. Uh, I don't know if that was TMI, but there you go. No. Um, <laughs> okay, good, good, good. All right, yeah. So uh, a little bit about Nicole. Um, she obviously she and I went to school together, and that's something that she could elaborate. Uh, we actually had a chance. We actually met in a class called descriptive drawing. Um, with an amazing professor named Lawrence Yoon. And if the interview allows it, we may have a chance to chat about that because that's a pretty interesting story. Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, we have to. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so, yeah, so a bit about Nicole. Uh, she, uh, her most recent role, role was as a uh, character designer uh, on the show called The Mighty Ones, which is currently out now on Hulu and Peacock. Um, and so before that, uh, Nicole, obviously, you know, she and I went to school at Cal State Fullerton, uh, but she got her break into the animation industry uh, as an intern uh, at Nickelodeon Animation Studios on the one and only show, the show that we quote from all the time, SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, and then after that, she became, she graduated school and then became a PA uh, at DreamWorks TV on a show called Cle Cleopatra in Space. And then she was actually PA on The Mighty Ones and then moved up to PC. Uh, production coordinator and then ended up being a character designer on the mighty one season three uh so nicole uh thank you so much uh for hopping on uh how you doing i'm good thanks so much for the introduction i'm glad to be here was that to be here with nacho libre oh yeah that's right <laughs> do you want me to just start off with the first question the first banger question yeah go for it all right cool all right so the first question is uh tell us uh where you grew up and also, what was the catalyst that got you into art? Oh, okay. So I grew up in the Bay Area, San Jose. Um, and the catalyst for getting me into art, honestly, is uh, a lot of people in my family cr are creative, especially my mom. Uh, my grandma was creative. My grandpa was creative. So I've been surrounded by all things art since I was a little kid um and I've I've been doing all through school like elementary school I had entered into some contests my like drawing one for the front cover of the yearbook in fifth grade <laughs> that's like <laughs> so so such a big flex um <laughs> and yeah I think it's just something like most artists I've been doing since I was little um and I actually just stuck with it and here I am a big time character designer now give it up for McCoy everybody <laughs> the interview is over thank you so much no I'm just kidding I'm just kidding okay, got plenty bye. more um actually I wanted to ask you so what what did your grandparents do specifically like um, what, what is it they did artistically they so my grandma was really just kind of like giving me a bunch of stuff to like essentially draw with she was uh -huh. one who was like here's colored pencils here's watercolor she got me into scrapbooking um my mom at the time when I was young she really loved clay so she would make these like teeny tiny little clay figurines so I was doing clay for a long time um and my grandpa was the one who's really into like drawing portraits and people so that really sparked my interest on like trying to draw like things that are realistic um and to draw people and he also loved cartoons too so that kind of diverted me into that area too that's awesome and so yeah. with that like did you already consider even at a young age did you already consider uh art to be something you wanted to do as a career or was that something you thought well this is something I like to do like did you just think of it that way or did you already think I gotta do something with art uh in the future yeah that's a good question I think I, I, I think about this a lot because I feel like this is always a question that artists get and I get a lot too. Um, I would say yes and no. Like 
I've always loved art and I didn't really see myself when I was little becoming an artist, but it was something like I did envision at certain points, but I also, <laughs> I also wanted to be like a whale rider <laughs> at one point, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like shamu and wait oh oh yeah i was gonna ask you that's a thing but yeah obviously like it's recording <laughs> not <this> anymore <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, and then what else i loved animals as we were talking about so i really wanted to be like a zookeeper or a veterinarian um but i just always like stuck with art that was just always something i always did so i think when i realized i i could actually do this was when i got to junior college um so I actually did pretty bad in high school I had some pretty rough grades I had to do a lot of <laughs> I know a lot of remedial classes pay attention in school kids um but I did take art still um and that was like the only class I had an A in I think or a B <laughs> either one uh and College kind of wasn't in the question for me, but I knew I wanted to keep doing a couple of classes so I could keep doing art classes. So I went to my local uh, junior college, which was West Valley. And I started taking a bunch of art elective classes and it was just like mind blowing to me. I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like I didn't know there are so many in-depth art classes. Uh, and I had a, whatchamacallit, a counselor tell me that if I got my grades up I could transfer to university and I was like wait really that that's possible she's like yeah it's no problem so I worked super hard uh passed all my classes and I was able to transfer to Fullerton which is where I met the awesome Miguel <laughs> oh my God. and uh yeah I majored in entertainment art and animation and I learned about being a character designer which I didn't really consider as a job for a long time I just knew I liked to draw cartoons a lot uh -huh. so a teacher told me like yeah you can do character design if you want I was like okay so I rolled with it wow made a portfolio and everything that's awesome and so uh what made you choose Fullerton because obviously you're you know, you were from San Jose at the time, like you were living oh. there. Like what made you decide Cal State Fullerton? Yeah, um, I only applied to like a handful of schools that were really like art focused. Mm -hmm. So I think I don't remember all of them, but I know for sure I applied to San Jose State, but their program was impacted. So I didn't mm -hmm. get into there. Um, and you missed Fullerton, out. Suckers. I know. What the heck, guys? Just kidding. No, I'm, I'm not, I, I was gonna say losers, but you guys aren't losers. You guys, you guys educate <laughs> the youth. You guys do your no, thing. I love, I love seeing people come out of there. I'm like, ah, oh, San Jose. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, so I ended up at Fullerton. Kind of just, it's one of the schools I applied to, and I wasn't like dead set on a specific school really. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew it was gonna be a little bit harder just because it was six hours away from home, give or yeah. take, mm -hmm. and um. I'd be leaving my family behind. I'd be leaving my then boyfriend, Chad, at the time behind. <laughs> it's now my husband. Um, so it was like, it was a trial, but it was, it was going to be a fun thing for me to get to continue my education and my art. So um, I guess I didn't list the other schools I was applying to, but I also applied to. You don't have Long to. Beach, you get, but... They don't, they don't matter. They don't matter now. Oh, they had their chance bye yeah bye bye well, goodbye bye felicia <laughs> no um, fullerton i think was ultimately like the best choice for me because mm -hmm. i think if i had stayed home in san jose i probably wouldn't have gotten the opportunity for like the internship and stuff i probably mm -hmm. would have been a little too scared to go out to la after that on my own so i think fullerton was a good stepping stone for me as far as like that's awesome making that step that's awesome that's so cool. And yeah. so actually kind of like, obviously, and so actually a question. So like for, for people watching, like what advice would you give to people who decide to move, move out to, to dorm or live close to the school they go to? Cause for you, obviously it must've been difficult, right? Like 
-hmm. growing up being born and raised in San Jose and then deciding obviously like now you're you're kickstarting your your college career right but then now you're deciding to go to a school that's six hours away from home um what advice do you give to anybody who decides to like move to like either a different state or another part of the state like like what advice would you have for them obviously that's a that's a big question but considering that you've been through that experience like for anyone else who might potentially go through that like what what experiences did you did you uh like based on your experiences like what would what did you take away from that yeah actually that's a good question um i i would say find whoever can be like a support system for you or just like look into other um clubs or like i guess Facebook's group was the first thing that I found that was Fullerton related because I was obviously trying to find a place to move and I couldn't afford living on campus so I had to live off campus and I didn't want to live too far when I was like I didn't know anybody there either um so I actually found a Facebook group that was all Fullerton kids trying to find housing in the area and I came across um a couple of gals that were looking for a roommate so I thankfully was blessed with amazing roommates for my first three years at Fullerton um and I had a second roommate who was also just as awesome um and I I guess that was like a huge thing for me was finding that because I was super lost on housing (laughs) um so anyway you can look into like groups like that or even reaching out to family. I had a cousin actually who was in the area too. She also went to Fullerton, but I think she was living with other people at the time. I don't remember why that didn't work out, but, uh, and then other thing too is I didn't end up joining any clubs cause I found some awesome friends. Um, but definitely whatever you're majoring in, try and like make friends as hard as it is uh it'll be super worth and just easier to go to class and uh there'll be a super good support system too when you have questions that are aren't related and spongebob quotes that are fun to share together (laughs) that was like the biggest blessing for me was finding uh friends like Miguel and our other two friends, Joel and Cassidy. They all the Harry Wizards. School. Yeah. 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 I will say, like, uh, thank you for sharing that. I think, it, I mean, if you're deciding to go to school or, or any other avenue of pursuing education, I think having a support system is, I think, the biggest thing. Once you have at least one person to talk to, it helps to kind of alleviate that stress of just being a fish out of water. And I think it's just kind of like you're jumping in from one fishbowl into another. Right. Yeah. So I think then finding that other group of people or one person to vibe with is really cool. And actually, I want to actually talk about how we met, because, again, like you're not just a guest <laughs> on this podcast, but you're one of my closest friends. And like you're not just a, you're not just an amazing artist, but you're just like an incredibly nice person, someone that I can vibe with and talk to. And so um, let's just talk about that. The origin story. I mean, I, mean, I think <laughs> it's interesting because, again, I feel like with anybody listening to this, you, you have your own friend groups and I feel like that's something you should cherish and appreciate. And so um, if you want, we could talk about that because again, in hindsight, you look back and you're like, wow, I didn't know Nicole at this time, but then now we ended up, you know, really getting to know each other. Um, so yeah, like I prefaced before we met in this class called descriptive drawing and we had this professor um, named Lawrence Yoon and descriptive drawing is basically just drawing realistically and he was known for being very um very demanding obviously like in the best way possible i know you're laughing but that's at least for us like for we us loved very it. we loved it but i <laughs> we loved it but there are people who hated it there are people who I know, did not like but we it were like, we were like crazy art students at the time where we were just like yes like give yeah. us the hardest stuff in the world yeah. i think that's why i think that's why again i think that's why you and I were able to connect so well as well as our two other friends because we obviously understood again with art in general and I think this is kind of branching out into bigger themes when it comes to making art and pursuing a career in it is that like you're always our job is mainly getting critiqued it's it's having to listen and having to really like understand what our flaws are and so in this class like this is the first class where I was like super intimidated super nervous and 
I think our first, obviously, like we had like five, what was it, like five pro assignments in there? Like each one was just yeah, like, I think so. yeah. And so um, I think the first time we were obviously in the class, but we didn't really talk to each other. And and obviously you can you can jump in, Nicole. But I remember the first time I really like noticed you was your first assignment where you did like, I think it was the ice cream cup right was it that yeah it was Trader yeah. Joe's ice it was cream Trader Joe's ice cream <laughs> and I remember thinking to myself oh my god this person is incredible and then, and then obviously I saw you I'm like oh my god who is this person whoa what the heck um so yeah it was crazy and then um do you want to talk about how like our teacher kind of wanted to make rivals out of us from that yeah <laughs> so this was like I'll have to find a picture of the the ice cream you gotta find yours too and we like I, I think you're gonna I still... have to like crop it up here <laughs> yeah yeah actually yeah I on the YouTube it's it's gonna be I'm gonna put the picture in there so we're like, Boop. Mm -hmm. um I guess essentially like woo. <laughs> Sorry, <you're> okay <laughs> okay anyway I while built. Miguel I, catches I, his breath <laughs> I I built good though for real okay good good, good. I, I'm good I'm um, still here <laughs> okay so the way I remember it right after every time we, we would put all of our artwork up the whole class on um the wall and we go and like critique everybody's work we'd put like little he gave us like colored stickers um and it was kind of essentially like a color code of like our thoughts and we'd all share like this is what's working in the portrait this is what I really like and then um also other critiques on like what to work on things of that nature and I feel like me and Miguel are always really close like tied essentially on our critiques and feedback um so <laughs> our teacher being I would say a pretty competitive like can see the the competitiveness between us even though we didn't have competitiveness I guess like the competition he called it he tried to like basically pit each other against us <laughs> yeah and he's like Miguel's your competition and basically he told Miguel Nicole's your competition <laughs> yeah. and basically that like brought us both together yeah. like dude your stuff's really good yeah yeah <laughs> like so it was pretty funny instead of like us butting heads or being like oh shoot I gotta be better than this guy it was basically like yeah you're inspiring I'm inspired by you yeah no and and I think because it was already a very like it was a stressful environment because I think for any for anybody who's interested in art like us we're very sensitive to people giving their opinions on on their yeah. on their projects and I feel like it was good because it really pushed us and I feel like it really helped us get better but I think for him to like pit us against each other obviously like I feel like part of it was, <laughs> was jokingly really. I know but like it was just funny <laughs> that he brought that up and I I feel like in the end like we just needed like people to we, we needed to comfort each other really yeah. because the class was very intense and maybe he was trying to secretly push us like I, I, I think to be a little bit better I so think it was reverse be... psychology yeah I think it was <laughs> yeah. reverse psychology yeah but uh and and yeah no that was so crazy and and I kind of want to reminisce on that because I I do really appreciate the fact that we were there at the right place at the right time and yeah. that's when I learned that you were you had just transferred I think was that you took that class your the first year you had excuse me transferred over right or was um, it your second I don't remember I don't it remember either been, it could have been my first or second year I feel like I didn't meet you guys until maybe like a semester or a year later Pro when I probably maybe. probably yeah and, I, and and it's important to bring this up because I feel like as as artists like what we do can be kind of lonely sometimes in the sense that we're just drawing by ourselves mm -hmm. but the fact that we obviously everyone's gonna have a different path but the fact that we met during school I feel like that was the greatest thing that could have ever happened because again what Nicole was alluding to before is that having that support system it just changes everything like not only did we become good friends and we spoke to each other but like it went be just beyond just like talking about our classes like we would hang out and then obviously that's when we met uh, our two other friends uh Joel and Cassidy and then we became the Harry Wizards um <laughs> and uh that's another story but um, in the end like we would just hang out and like talk to each other and like it just provided this extra layer of this isn't just a work like this is this is like it became fun like it became just a, like I would always look forward to like getting up in the morning and be like okay I'm gonna go and chat with chat with the the Harry Wizards and like thank you for that like it really it really like looking back I really appreciated like just how 
how awesome you were and how awesome you still are right and like just all the cool times we had together in school and like it, it motivated us I think that's part of it too it's like you need other people to help motivate you and yeah you definitely motivated me and hopefully I did the same for you but yeah so that was really cool and so I actually kind of want to jump into um my next question which is obviously this was I think around like your last year of, of school right like when you got the yeah. internship Mm-hmm. it was really it was it was like also on your on your last year right because yeah I, it was I, like last or second semester I definitely crazy. like I just, it was wild I definitely like graduated right after because I had Spongebob on my cap so yeah yeah so I'm, do you want to talk so about that how yeah. you so actually like obviously how did you get the internship what was that journey like and then and then the second question is how was that internship experience oh okay um so yeah, I believe it was the last semester for me. Um, I had applied to the internship thing, just kind of like wishful thinking, not really sure I would get it. And the way it worked too was you had to select your classes to have an elective. And I don't think I did at the time. I think I like switched it at the last minute. I was like, I probably should keep this open in case I do get the internship. So I was like, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't. No, just fix my classes later and uh lo and behold I got um like callbacks for interviews I think I had to do two interviews one was with um the like hiring coordinator at the time she asked me like a handful of questions and then the next interview (laughs) I was like on vacation in Seattle and they called me and I was like at the mall (laughs) it was I I remember that I was like (laughs) I was like I'm never gonna get this they called me at the mall and I had to like go outside and I was like hello (gasps) and they're like hi this is uh the coordinators from Spongebob we want to interview and I was like "Uh uh-oh and I remember I was like pacing I was like a nervous wreck and I hung up I think it felt like it felt like no this is Patrick yeah hey is this This Nicole Patrick no this is Patrick (laughs) pretty much um it felt like a super long interview but it definitely also felt like it was like five minutes so I was just a wreck I was like I don't know what I'm gonna if I'm gonna get it I don't know if they'll call me back um I think they called me back that same night and they said I got it and I was like crying in the car <laughs> of tears happy tears of course I don't remember that so they called you the day of that's insane mm-hmm. were you still at the and mall I was, no I was just leaving the mall to leave oh yeah <laughs> you're, you're ready to mall. leave you're crying in the part the, the mall parking lot. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And yeah. so, did they ask you the question about what ranch, what what kind of dressing you'd be? Did they ask you that? Oh my gosh, no! It was. I think it was what Nickelodeon character would I be and why? Uh huh. And I don't yeah. remember what I said. <laughs> I had the interview questions written down somewhere. I would. Uh-huh. I'll find it uh, later on. But that's all. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Would you feel that the questions they asked were like more so like what, what whether you're available, right? Like what what got you what made you interested in animation? Like was it those kinds of questions they asked mainly? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. in that kind of vein? Like it, it was never like anything super intimidating, right? Like, do you know how to use this software? No, or do you know how to you, do you know how to do this? I remember. Okay. Uh uh-uh. uh. It was yeah. it was along those lines. Okay. Um and that's like essentially what the coordinators of the show asked me. I think the the coordinator that worked in hiring, it was a little bit more laid back, mm-hmm. but it was also still like, what makes you think you'd fit this role? And yeah, um, like, what do you want to do for the extensive extent of your career mm-hmm. or like five year plan, stuff like that. So, OK, cool. Yeah, perfect. No, that's good to know, because I feel like there's always that elusiveness of like what interview questions are being asked by recruiters in animation. Yeah. And I feel like based on my experience, too, the questions are never really super like intimidating or complex. I think it's more yeah. so like, are you available? What year are you? Right? Like, uh, what makes you think you'd be a good fit? Like, tell us a bit about yourself. I think yeah. first and foremost, right? Like, I think the, I feel the reason they picked you was because you you had this passion and this 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 eagerness to obviously like I wasn't there, but I feel like that was part of it, right? That you're you're passionate and eager to just be able to contribute right and to be able to help them out or what do you think I'm curious like what what do you think was the was what do you think were the factors that led into you getting the job because again looking back on it like you were picked out of 
potentially hundreds of people right interviewing mm -hmm. so so I mean obviously if you don't know the answer that's fine because I feel like no one really tells you that they always try to keep it hush hush but like what do you think was was the the x factor that got you that internship oh that's a good question um Thank you. I've, I've, I'm asking a lot of good questions guys just know are. I'm good I know <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know if I could pinpoint it exactly because I was just like that was a while ago. I wish I knew. Oh, no, of course. Um, but if you can just but, vaguely, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our friend Cassidy did actually work as an intern at the time. And um, she was, like, really just helping me, like, just relax and be myself and kind of, like, coaching me on essentially, like, these are probably ballpark things they're going to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, which, like Miguel was saying, just the general, like, um when are you available? Are you graduating soon? Things like that. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that took a little bit of the pressure off me, I think. Um, otherwise, I can get pretty tongue tied at times. So <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> that was really helpful um, to just have a friend that was yeah. um, already in the industry and just like was really kind of helping me with um, like how to answer questions in a way that would mm -hmm. um, give like a thumbs up from recruiters and um coordinators who were interested in hiring interns so that's cool and actually just to just to give a bit of context so Cassidy one of our other friends uh she actually had a chance to intern at Nickelodeon I think a semester before you and mm -hmm. this is actually I think right I think both of us both Cassidy and I started interning obviously I interned at DreamWorks but um I think she was interning around the same time as me and then and then obviously then you came along after and then intern that's cool and then again like the Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Yeah, she was. Um, she was an intern for two semesters. Two semesters. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. And and again, that just shows you like get like knowing the people around you, either whether it be like through online school or through actual school or through other um, artist uh, like artist vocational schools as well. I feel like having that community because you never know if someone's there to help you out or to give you guidance and I think that's really awesome that Cassie was able to provide you uh with assurances and being able to say like hey listen like here are things to think about go ahead and do it and like you you got it that's that's awesome that's really cool yeah and also the counselor that was at um Fullerton helped me a lot too with like my interview questions I forget her name you know her name oh yeah shout out to Miss Laura Neal at the yeah, Laura uh, Neal. career center at Cal State Fullerton uh she, I owe it a lot to her for getting yeah. me into it and she helped not just you, but like other people as well. So shout out to Miss Neil. We love you. Uh, we we owe, we owe a lot to you, even though you deny it. But it's true. We owe a lot to you. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And thank you for sharing that, Nicole. Again, like this is all super, super inspiring. Again, like hearing it again, because obviously like, you know, we're friends and like, you know, you, you've mentioned this before, but hearing it again, it's just really cool. And it adds so much value to just your experience in general. And so then uh, the next question is, obviously, you get the internship. What was it like interning uh, on one of the most beloved shows, animated shows of all time, SpongeBob SquarePants? What was that like? Actually, it did was... you know, did you know, did you know during the interview process that you were potentially going to be on SpongeBob? Or was that a surprise to you when you came on? Yes. Yes, I think so. I, I'm like not 100% sure it's all such a blur it's, it was years um, ago too yeah yeah I was hearing other people get interviews for other things um which kind of alluded me to the fact that I was like okay well there's only so many shows left um and when they called me they were like hi we're the coordinators on Spongebob and I was like <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I guess essentially no I didn't really <laughs> um but the internship itself was like just so fun everything I could ask for in an internship like the people there had they were so knowledgeable and they still do traditional painting on the show so it was like wild to see that um I got to work with the coordinators a lot and they were like telling me the ins and outs of production um I got to help multiple different teams and people like around the uh spongebob area on different things so actually that was fun yeah something i didn't mention and and my apologies but you this was a production internship right yes. this is a production internship yes. so can you 
provide like just a quick description of what a production internship is and why you chose that internship? Sure. Um, so production internship is essentially helping out the production team of a TV show, which was SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, and the production team consisted for me of two coordinators um, and two PAs. They also have like a supervisor, production supervisor and production manager most of the time. Um, but I wasn't really closely working with them. I was mostly working with the coordinators and the PAs. Um, and I was just helping them out with like general tasks that they had throughout the day. Um, like I would do sometimes like prepping artists uh, Photoshop files and doing like prep call outs, stuff like that for um, breakdowns of the storyboards. And I would also print their their storyboards. <laughs> and they they had super long storyboards were probably like this thick uh, for meetings because they'd go through it all at meetings. Um, so a bunch of like random tasks like that, essentially just helping the team wherever they need. Um, and overall it was a blast like a lot a lot of hands-on like learning experience which was neat that's awesome think, that's really cool oh go ahead was there another part of the question I oh forgot. no it was just your experience you know you, oh, you already sorry. answered that your experience working on the show yeah it was yeah. great that's awesome and i remember you actually uh, i think you gave us the opportunity joel and i to visit the studio one time right oh my gosh or was it cassidy I forget. Maybe I it, it was you. Cassidy. I think it was Cassidy because we were trying to see where you were. And I think you were, you. I don't know if you were there that day or you were off. Again, it's crazy how Must long have... ago this was. Yeah, I think it yeah. was Cassidy. But yeah, because we met, fun... we met an artist there and he, a story artist there. And he's really cool. I forgot his name. Do you remember what he looked like? Yeah, he had like, and he had like, like sort of long hair and then glasses. <gasps> oh, and you were super... there okay wait he had long blonde hair yeah long blonde hair glasses too. um i think he was wearing he like a sat right shirt. he sat right behind my desk yeah That's yeah i i forgot his name or oh, whatever That's <laughs> fine. that guy was dope whoever he you was. are whoever you are you're awesome <laughs> <laughs> i wish i remembered your name um but no that was Sorry, so, that's, the worst memory that's all good and i wanted to kind of give like context for like why we chose production internships well first and foremost like obviously they're not art related internships but they don't need to be because usually a lot of people who work as artists in the animation industry like a lot of them did start in production which is essentially like Nicole said like you're working with people that help to manage the show and keep it on track and scheduling and everything and it was so cool that Nicole, Nicole got the chance to do that because even though say she wasn't doing any art she she you were exposed right Nicole to a bunch of artists the pipeline like you you were basically in the room with the artists that we admire. And so um, I think for anybody who's like, wait, internship? Like, but we're not drawing. Like, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that you were, Nicole was able to break into the industry by by being a production intern and just learning a lot from people, but also getting to meet people and network with them as well. I don't network, working such a weird word, but like you did that essentially, Nicole, right? Like not only did you have a fun experience, but you met a lot of cool people there too. Oh yeah. And I, I, I guess like to feed off of like what you're saying too is, Essentially, um, the production internship really was just like an eye-opening uh, look into what goes on behind the scenes um, in animation. Because really, like, we were just kind of starry-eyed students who were like, yeah, we want to draw. But I knew nothing about, like, okay, how does this job actually work? Where does it fit in the pipeline? And, like, seeing all those steps was just, like, super awesome, like, just to get my head wrapped around um, what I would be doing potentially as an artist. And even if I decided not to go the artist path, like knowing that there's a whole um, set of jobs that you could do that mm -hmm. if you decide, oh, I don't want to be an artist, like you could still be yeah. in this industry and surrounded by it too. So that was something that like also drew me to it essentially. Yeah. That's incredible. And I'm glad you really brought up that point because in the end, say you have a specific goal of working in a specific part of the industry like you know doing backgrounds props but then maybe you see another department right so you actually mm -hmm. like production more you like managerial stuff you like to be able to be in meetings and help people coordinate stuff like that's a really phenomenal point because um 
it just helps open your mind to a bunch of things and it just creates an exciting world of possibilities you don't have to always just keep it like this is the only thing i'm gonna do and i'm just gonna stick to that there's always this beauty of like wait what if there's other things that i like to do in animation and there's plenty like there's recruiting mm -hmm. um there's there's you know working in like tech whatever like there's there's so many different opportunities and i'm glad you pointed that out because you don't want to be just narrowed down obviously if you're like set in stone like i want to do this then that's good but yeah there's, sure. there's tons of other options out there which is great look at you yeah. such a <laughs> wow and such I, a plethora of knowledge i don't regret it at all i mean it's it's like a a way i met so many people without like you were saying networking I feel like when people network or say the word network, they think like they have to ask like the smart questions to people or like job related questions. Uh -huh. More or less, I think it was like a subconscious networking where you're just yeah. making friends with people, getting to know people while you were working. So yeah, yeah. it's like building uh, a network of people without knowing you are. So mm -hmm. That's awesome. So actually I wanted to go back and, like kind of rewind a little bit because uh, something that I feel like is also uh, something that people want to know as well is obviously you're doing the production thing, right? You're doing the internship and something I didn't, I didn't press on um, in the beginning was obviously like you were interested in character design. Obviously that's something that you went to school for. Um, how was it like balancing the production internship with the character design stuff? Like, did you ever show people on the show, your character design stuff where you ever, vocal about your interest in doing character design like i'm curious to see like i'm curious if you uh found a way to kind of introduce what your ultimate goal was even though you started you know in the internship phase yeah sure yeah that was a little bit tricky because i didn't want to come off as like hey look at my portfolio i'm like this is the only thing i want to do because in reality, I really was like, production was interesting for me still. And I was like keeping an open mind. Um, and yes, of course I wanted to be an artist, but I was having fun in what I was doing. So I was like, I don't want to like, just throw myself out there. I was like, this is what I do. But um, essentially I was just like, as an intern, um, of course I put my priorities first on like helping the team and everything. But every once in a while, like when we were in, meetings or I had like a couple minutes here and there like I'll draw doodles like when Steph was printing out those big chunky storyboards I'd like draw little doodles on post-it notes and Spongebob's area had this really cool like post-it note wall so I put post-it notes up there um of like all my doodles and things like that and then um there was a couple times where I had the opportunity to do like a like a thank you card um, so I did my own custom thank you card and like gave those out to people and I put like my Instagram on it, which was really helpful to say like, I can, I can draw, but like a little subtle, subtle hint. And if people wanted to look at it, sure, then they could. Um, so that was like a little sneaky opportunity, uh, for me. And then the art director on SpongeBob, um, Peter, he actually, uh, looked at my work a little bit I think I might have had a sketchbook or I showed him my website or something but he really encouraged me to keep pursuing uh character design as well which was awesome <laughs> uh so I was able to show a few people here and there on my internship um and then when I became a PA I was pretty busy for the most part but um I did still like keep up with people would ask me like oh do you have social media or an instagram i want to add you i'd be like here's my art one <laughs> i look so at you that was sneaky like, sneak yeah those are just like subtle ones i was like here i use my art one yeah. the most which uh -huh. i did <laughs> yeah no and it's true you're honest about yeah. it yeah so people would be like oh my gosh you can draw that's cool yeah and again which is really common in the industry is people will leave um for like other positions or um they have birthdays etc mm -hmm. so we'd always draw them like yeah cards to say like oh congrats on like a new role or happy birthday so like i hardcore took advantage of that i was like i yeah. want to draw a bunch of stuff for this that's awesome so i was able to do that um i was also pretty 
vocal with the art director uh jenny gase baker on mighty ones that Mm -hmm. um i was super interested in art so i'd show her every once in a while that's awesome yeah that's cool no i'm glad you mentioned that because that's that's something i feel like people should do if they were to get internships or get in somehow because uh no one's gonna read your mind and think oh yeah this person is working as a pa but i know that person wants to be a board artist or this person wants to do this dev it's like you have to tell people and it always feels weird because there's always that stigma of you're only there just to ask people for information like in the end like don't treat it like that just like like nicole really demonstrated how organically she was able to incorporate that stuff and like she never really put it down people's throats it was always like oh yeah here's my art instagram like it was it's it's so organic and so subtle and like it doesn't turn people off like so i i say like i encourage you guys to do that if you can if you're interested in doing the art route but obviously there are people who just get into art like right away but i think the way nicole entered the industry like this i think it's i think really valuable and i think in hindsight it makes people better artists because you understand the production you understand the the limitations but also like the way they want artists to communicate i think that's that's super, super important. And kind of going off of that topic, obviously you interned at Nickelodeon and then you re- literally, it was really, literally your last semester mm-hmm. in school. Then you graduated, right? So then yeah. you're writing off of this high of like, I just interned on at a, a Nickelodeon. <laughs> did you get a job right after? Did, did Nickelodeon pick you up after or no? No. So um, my um, boyfriend at the time proposed. So I was engaged, That's went right. home for like a year after school and I was like debating do I stay in San Jose get married and then try and go back into LA or do I just like I I need I wanted and needed a job after school so I was like okay do I I have production intern experience do I apply for a PA role and see if it works out so I was looking in San Jose and I was also looking in LA at both um like options and essentially I applied for a few PA roles and I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm probably not getting to get any bites, which to my surprise, I did. <laughs> and I think I reached out to you guys, Miguel, the, the hairy wizards. And yes. I was like, guys, yeah. I got interviews. I don't know what to do. Do I go in person or do I do a video call? And Miguel was actually the one who's like, you should try and go in person if you can. I was like, oh my I, gosh. So I, I was- I, I did I, I said that oh my yeah. god wow <laughs> I mean thankfully you did because mm. I think um yeah just it, it's just like it's more natural and just like it feels more humanized when you go in person I think and to see that like who you're gonna hire and um asking those questions back and forth just feels like a lot more organic so mm-hmm. essentially it worked out for me to go there because it wasn't that far I just flu um it was like maybe less than an hour but I had three interviews and I remember telling Miguel on the third interview I was like if I do not get a call back on this one like I can't fly anymore there's no way it's gonna break my bank (laughs) and the third one was with um Mighty Ones and Cleopatra in space the two of them both needed help um so it's Cleopatra in space for three months and then Mighty Ones for the duration of the season. Oh my god, that's crazy. Did I I look back? I'm like, oh my god, I, I was so I'm I was so bold. It's like, no, buy that plane ticket. You gotta send me that bill. I, you gotta send me that plane bill. Oh my god. For me to say uh, that, I'm glad I did, but also I'm like, oh my god, like what if Nicole doesn't have the money? I think I think looking back, my reasoning was um if you're going to spend however amount, I think I, I was thinking of it as like an investment, right? Yeah. I didn't but obviously, mean, I didn't know. I couldn't predict the future, but part of me was like, <laughs> fuck it, just do it. <laughs> you never know. I know, because I was but, also on that borderline too. I was like, I mean, I feel like a video call is going to be like, just like, mer, like it's not going to be memorable. Y- um, and yeah, I, they also yeah. they also didn't give me, I guess, that opportunity. Like, you know, I hope COVID's changed everything where it's like video calls so normal now, like back mm-hmm. In I guess it was like 2019, 2018. Yeah, that it was like 
it was like kind of like why why would you want to do a video call when you could just come and interview in person it was right, kind of like but, a taboo thing so yeah exactly exactly I, yeah because then also there's always that fear right of like oh they now know i don't live near the area so then yeah. that means that i <laughs> which really i do you think do you nicole do you even think that that's a thing where like that's like that's like something that they consider like no bueno or do you feel yeah. like at this point people can just move out that sadly i'd say it depends on the production there's mm. some i've seen where they're like it doesn't matter where you're at we'll we'll hire you or like if you're really serious about moving mm -hmm. to the location sure but mm. i remember when i was interviewing i could tell right off the bat that they were a little cautious that mm. i wasn't from the area even though i wasn't trying to bring it up they're like, like <laughs> the first interview I had, they're like, oh, how was the traffic? Was it too bad? I was like, I didn't, I didn't have to deal with any actually. And they're like, wait, what? How's that? Did you like bike? I was like, I flew. <laughs> they're like, from where? <laughs> and I was like, the Bay Area, but I'll move here if I get the, like, uh -huh. it was just. That's so funny. I I'm flew. <laughs> I flew. I think it's just, I mean, it's hard to know, like, I get it because I've been on the other side of those interviews where we're interviewing mm -hmm. like other PAs where it's just like yeah. if somebody says yeah I could totally move to LA in just a few months it sounds unbelievable but I was able to do it I really mm -hmm. don't know how but <laughs> yeah. um, oh my god wow I mean I did before so I feel like it all worked out yeah and, and I feel like when you're in that situation you have to make those decisions and yeah. you'll get it done no matter what, especially with the pressure of like, I just got this job. Um, it's better for me to move out. And in that moment, you can't really think too much on it. You just have to act on it. Obviously I haven't been yeah. in that situation, but I can totally understand with you. It's like, you gotta work. And quick, essentially you know, I told them like, I wouldn't have applied if I wasn't serious about moving They're, out here or had something mm -hmm. that was lined up for me already to mm -hmm. be able to make that possible. So absolutely. Wow, look at you. Oh my God. I'm so proud of you. That's crazy. Uh, looking back on that, I remember we, we were on the phone about that. And in the moment, you're like, who knows where this goes, right? Obviously, I yeah. always hope for the best. I'm always optimistic. Um, but I'm glad it worked out. Because then eventually, obviously, the Cleopatra Space interview and the Mighty Ones interview, that's what got you in, right? That's what got you out here to the mm -hmm. LA area. And so how was that like? How was your experience as a PA? Well, I, I mean, for those of you who don't know, PA means production assistant. What was your experience like on um on uh Cleopatra Space and the Mighty Ones? How was that like as a PA? Yeah. So um I I think back on my time on Cleopatra and Space a lot because it was a huge, huge learning curve for me. Um they were primarily using um a software called Shotgrid. It was well, uh, now it's Shotgrid, right? It used to be yes. called Shotgun. Mm -hmm. And I think I think there's a reason why like they change the name I, I mean, you guys use shotguns <laughs> what i i was shocked by the dude i was like what what is what is this software why is it kind of awkwardly named yeah right <laughs> oh, anywho, anywho yeah. it's like a way to organize a ton of like designs and assets onto um a digital software which is like super amazing but it can be really confusing like if you don't understand the ins and outs of it so that team was super, super gracious with me, like taught me so much. And like half the time I went home feeling so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel Same. like I'm going to get let go. Like, this is just, it was, it was a lot to learn and really fast. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully they were on the tail end of production. So like they were almost done. They, mm -hmm. they had like an episode or two left that I helped them um, complete. Yeah. But I was still like trying so hard to like, just like hit the ground running mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but i mean that was like a, a blessing for me to start with them because on mighty ones we also use chakra a lot so i came into that role knowing a lot more about it and um it wasn't super intimidating starting that mm -hmm. next um series from the beginning so yeah uh blessed to have had those awesome people on Cleopatra and Space production teach me everything they knew because oh, <laughs> they were probably like, Nicole, what what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I just I'm just a new kid who wants to draw. 
Right? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to draw cartoons. That's it. No, but it was it was it was great. Um and then starting on Mighty Ones too, I started actually and they had a design team and a story team. So mm -hmm. the story production team helped all the storyboard artists and obviously the design team helped all the um like BG artists and character mm -hmm. designers, that mm -hmm. stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I started in story, uh, which was really fun i didn't know i would love it so much uh because storyboard artists pitching we had a storyboard driven show which means we didn't have written out scripts they just had a little prompt mm -hmm. that they would go off of so we didn't know what to expect whenever they would pitch it was kind of just like whatever their brains came up with yeah yeah so uh -huh. those were so fun to help prepare for and watch uh live and in action <laughs> yeah right. and then wow somebody from the uh a pa from the design side had left and mm -hmm. um they wanted to kind of switch things around where they were like nicole would you be interested to move to the design spot and i said yeah because yeah. designs yeah <laughs> <need it." laughs> yeah so then i was doing design for a little bit i think this was all it was it was kind of wild i think it was when been like a year or so uh and then the production coordinator for design left and they're like nicole do you want to be the coordinator i was like okay. oh my god okay. so <laughs> so when you got promoted to coordinator how how mm -hmm. many months how much pa experience did you have before that were you a pa for about a year at that point or a little yeah. less? oh wow mm -hmm. okay that that seems that's like that at was least a you PA got some on like, experience yeah i was a pa on both sides of it for mm -hmm like a year together so yeah wow okay that's good because i know some people like get promoted sometimes depending on the production like they, they they're they only a pay for like a couple months and they get promoted like cassidy didn't cassidy yeah. go through that where she only was a pay for like a couple months she's like i got promoted to coordinator i'm like mm -hmm. oh sometimes my god i mean it clicks for people really fast too yeah. so I feel like that could be like an easy like yeah. super easy transition yeah but for me i would just i'm like an intimidated little turtle i'm like uh, same girl i'm i'm, I'm a little <laughs> just give me a turtle like, shell okay, and i'll, I'll give you i'll give you my best impression of a turtle because that was me when i was a PA <laughs> as well it's just like it wasn't definitely wasn't like intuitive for me but yeah my coordinator at the time with mighty ones was just like fantastic though and I, she helped me a lot like preparing for it um so yeah. i felt like nervous wreck but still nervous ready to jump in <laughs> and 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 to to go a bit off of off of that um the people obviously like when you're starting off entry level and you're just like very green and like you're very new to a position you always have mm -hmm. this tendency to believe that people are just gonna like get mad at you or feel like oh you're slowing the production down like i think that's just us thinking that when in it reality is. like with you nicole and, and also a bit with me people are just there to help like the last thing people want to be is, is, is an asshole to to you and just be like oh yeah you know you came on yeah. to you know like with this kind of little with this kind of attitude and um for the most part pe people are just super nice and so like for if sure. anyone if you guys get into any sort of production role obviously it depends don't quote me on this i would say most <laughs> productions will likely have people that are very nice sometimes maybe not but at least in, in my experience and also other people's experiences people are always praising the help that they got from people who were coordinators or have been in production longer because they want to see you succeed. And also they want to make sure that you help contribute to the show. And um, people are just super nice. And I'm really glad that you had that support system. Obviously the show itself may have specific, I would say like things going on, right? Like there might be ups and downs with the production itself, but the people there are, are, are trying to help you. And and I've had a chance to visit Nicole back when we were still in person, um, just like visiting her and just seeing like how things were. Yeah, and we worked at the same studio. <laughs> worked at the same studio. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you're uh, like, were you, you were on the same floor or same building? Something so, like that. Yeah, so just 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 a little behind the scenes for, for our audience here. Um, so this DreamWorks TV was was located in a satellite area, just meaning that it wasn't really in the uh, the main campus. The yellow like the really beautiful outdoors campus that people kind of know that's on flower street we were on i think it was pioneer central. boulevard central avenue we were on central avenue and it was just in like glendale. this in glendale and um we we were like, dreamworks tv was five floors like we occupied five floors but they weren't they weren't on the, they weren't on 
they, they weren't all even together. Like, so we had a, I remember this, we were on the second floor. So it was a yeah. 24 story, 25 story building. And obviously there's like other, other floors that had like Disney attorneys and like other offices and stuff. And so we occupied five floors, but they weren't all like consecutive. So we, uh, we were on the second floor, the, the sixth floor, I think the seventh floor, the 24th and 25th floor. Yes, yeah, so that's five. And yeah, so I was on the 24th. I was always at the top. You were on the 25th floor. Yeah. And then I was on the 24th floor. So whenever I, I, I got bored, um, I shouldn't say that, but whenever like I just needed to like chat with somebody, I'd, I'd go to Nicole's and I know she was always busy and I always felt bad because I always want, I, I always wanted to be self-aware whenever someone was busy. It was typically like, it was typically we'll only like right in the morning if we got there early or yeah. like at lunchtime. So we yeah. weren't like super irresponsible didn't do our jobs i did my work and i'm still employed so that <laughs> that all that that says it all you can be you yeah. can connect the dots but yeah then and i would also a lot, visit... of, a lot of like snack breaks too yeah yeah and so um that's something that i really miss about that those those but Ooh, i, I want to mention that because again it's like sometimes with the work right and this is something you get into if, if you want nicole but like obviously with the work sometimes it can be a lot and a lot of times you know you may have to work overtime and and Sometimes the demands of the production and depending on other, how the shows run, um, it can get a little crazy. And I feel like this is said for all shows. I think all shows, n- there's never really a show that runs super, super smoothly. There's always hiccups. And the fact that we had a chance to just like visit each other, like just like randomly whenever we wanted to was very nice. Cause then it just, uh, it just helped to kind of alleviate that, that pressure. Right. Yeah. And just kind of let us forget a bit about what we're doing. Um <laughs> And so uh, if you want, we can get into like what your experience was like um, as a PA or as a PC, right? Um, what were some of like the the ups and downs of that? If you want to get into that a little bit, just based on your experience. Oh, well, um, I would say, I think just like the ups were definitely, there was a lot of ups. We're mm-hmm. all, we had like a great team. We're always chatting up. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an awesome PA who's also named Nicole. So we'd be like. Oh, yeah, that's right like dynamic duo um yeah there was like just the the whole atmosphere of the crew was pretty awesome like everybody was really friendly um and we'd always go for snack breaks every Mm -hmm. lunch we'd have coffee every morning Mm -hmm. um there was a person upstairs who'd like a candy office so we'd get like candy oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i'd say like as far as like bumps i mean it was just like almost just the basic everyday things like something would go wrong with the color script or Mm -hmm. um sometimes people would be stressed out and uh I guess stuff like that will come up um Mm -hmm. but otherwise like it's almost like the it's almost like an ordinary job where like just like it's like a wave Mm -hmm. of emotions as far as um the hiccups but yeah and you so can think for, of like a specific example. Yeah, you don't have to. I think it's good to know that like if someone were to get in get into animation through this route, it's important for them to know that obviously there's an excitement, right? And and uh an eagerness to just do your best, but also too it's it's being able to like manage kind of those expectations and just kind of focus on you, right? Like being mm-hmm. able to prioritize your health. Um what, what would you say for anybody who would who potentially um would get into animation through the production route do you have any like tips or anything Hmm. anything that might be helpful for anybody like kind of coming into this new yeah I guess I didn't really share like how I ended up getting my position um going from like transitioning from coordinator to character designer yeah Um, yeah absolutely I guess kind of like essentially what we've been talking about is making like good relationships with people um just like just being friends with people essentially is like really what's helpful um in continuing your career forward so um as I was saying I like my art director knew I wanted to pursue designing um just based on like all those little like thank you cards I would draw for people um and birthday cards things like that um and she had seen my Instagram before and stuff like that so we would joke back and forth about me being a character designer one day and the opportunity opened up when Mighty Ones was going into um, season 
three, uh, she said, hey, I think you, she messaged me one day <laughs> working from home and she's just like, you should apply to be a character designer. I was like, on our show? She said, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't turn that down. I mean, the art director of the shows asked me. So I was like, okay. And she gave me a um, kind of like an art test, or like, which was essentially an assignment, um, like a real time kind of assignment for a character designer uh, on the show. And I had to draw a bunch of little pickles, <laughs> these pickle characters. <laughs> it's <laughs> isn't this a kid show what is this he's a cute little kidding. pickle guy oh, there's I a know. whole episode on it I... you'll love it i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> folks i'm out that that's all for today <laughs> um no that's that's crazy yeah but that was my <laughs> i can't stop laughing that was my, <laughs> my test <laughs> And uh, the character supervisor at the time was also named Jenny Goldberg, uh, mm. was super supportive when I turned my stuff in. She emailed me right away and she's like, stuff is great. And That's awesome. we talked it over and went over like little notes and stuff I should do here and there. Yeah. Um, so I think I did like a few revisions and I did a turnaround. Mm. Um, and I remember the showrunner, Sunil, and a couple other people i think it was like the line producer and the um, i guess the a couple other people i can't remember who were there but we're all in a meeting together and he's like hey i guess we should tell you the good news i was like what good news he's like you're gonna be on the show as a designer i was like i like literally froze up i was like really <laughs> really? I left. I have this like photo of me that Chad took, or I'm on the phone with my mom calling. I'm like, Mom, I'm a character. I'm like this, Mom. Guess what? <laughs> like, I gotta see that photo. I got. Face. I gotta see that photo. Oh I have God. it. I'll find it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Send that to me. That's funny. Send that to the chat. Oh my God. That's that's incredible. Well, yeah. So yeah. like. Uh, something that I was going to ask you, because obviously I, I like to hear this. I like to hear people's thoughts on this, but um, obviously when you're growing up, right, parents, I think you know, my parents were very supportive, you know, growing up and doing art. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I feel like there's a, skept a skepticism when it comes to the decision making of like, I want to do art as a career. So yeah. did you feel like that was like a cathartic thing for you to like call your parents and be like, hey, listen, like I actually got like a design gig. Like, how was that? How was that for you? Like, what was what was the like, what were you feeling when that happened? Oh, they're they've been like super supportive of me um, ever since I got like my PA gig and getting the character yeah. design job was just like icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. um, I guess before um, I wanted to get into college for art, my parents mm -hmm. were both like, Are you sure? Because mm -hmm. that is it a real possibility? Yeah. Um. So they're just like a little bit skeptical, of course. Which is natural. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Mm -hmm. Totally fair. Um. Yeah, because I mean, I knew hardly anything about it, so I couldn't really back up my mm -hmm. argument of like, this is a good idea, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they supported me, me a lot, like to even move there and everything. So they had mm -hmm. fair their fair share of worries, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. 100% they were always really supportive of me and any sort mm -hmm. of mini victory I had so when I called my mom she almost like didn't believe me she's like like an actual like an actual designer like that <laughs> way <laughs> oh my god that's crazy I did she get emotional or not or was she like just like did oh, she cry yeah. or no no she didn't cry but she was just like oh my gosh I'm so proud of you that's and awesome. my dad she's like Dave get over here <laughs> she's a designer <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome that's really cool i just had to i just had to hear that because i think really like we're we're human beings and obviously like we're very in intense on like our careers and like wanting to make it but it's always nice when you have people who can vocally be like oh yeah wow cool you did it yeah like you proved us you proved us wrong and like now you're off to the races and doing that so that's cool i just had to ask that because it's always nice because i feel like that's something that people should strive towards right you know people may be skeptical 
naturally, but it's always great when you're able to actually go in, jump in, jump into the, you know, jump, jump off the, the, you know, the diving board and just see if you can stick the landing. And um, when you do that, people are like, wow, people kind of immediately just like retroactively just change their minds. And it's always cool when you're just able to just keep doing it, you know, you're not doing it for that, yeah. but like when you're doing that, just, just for the sake of wanting to achieve that goal, it's amazing when people start to reciprocate that, that praise. And it's really nice. And I'm glad that you had that opportunity. Cause you know, like you said, like you were going through having to move out. Right. And then having to like pretty much live a life here in SoCal and then not knowing exactly how the future was going to go. And for this moment to, to happen, especially for people who want to do character design, the fact that you were able to accomplish the goal of being a character designer, which is a pretty coveted role, right? Like yeah. it's, it's definitely not like a kind of role that anybody can get into the fact that you were able to get into it. That was huge. I was, was shocked. It, it didn't hit me for probably like, I think I was working for maybe six or eight months and I was still like, this is still, that's real. crazy. <laughs> and I got to say like, you were definitely like the right person for the job. Cause I, I remember we had a chance to, you know, like talk about that. And it, it's, I just knew just seeing like your work online and um, just seeing that it was really cool that you were able to, and obviously just seeing like now the stuff that's coming out, like it's, it's really awesome. Do you, uh, do you plan on like putting that stuff up on your website or sharing that on Instagram? Like the stuff you work oh, on? Oh Yeah. I've been I've been um busy the past few days, but mm -hmm. I keep forgetting. I'm like, oh yeah, I can share this stuff now. So yeah, I'm probably gonna double check it. It's a, it's good because mm -hmm. I still have a friend um yeah. in production there. Uh, but yeah, because awesome. my paranoid yeah, self, cool. I always get so worried. That'd be cool. Like, yeah, I mean the show's out now, so I think I think yeah. we're safe. Um, <laughs> I'm probably safe. Um, so how so what were the um I think obviously people want to know, right? Like, how is it like being a character designer? And like, what were the responsibilities of, of, of your role? So my responsibilities of the role were um, essentially like I got, I think I got to draw on almost every episode except for a few. Um, but they would take like little chunks of the storyboard, um, the production team, they would break down, like these are the characters that we need mm -hmm. from um this episode and they give out the list um uh, of assignments too we had a few different character designers on the show so i got a few mm -hmm. um and it'd be kind of like essentially whatever they needed a lot of the times i drew a lot of um people because the showrunner um liked a lot of the people i drew um yeah also when they're face flat like spe special poses uh -huh. he's like you're super gonna draw them like smash face flat yeah. so give me a lot of those <laughs> yeah. that's awesome <laughs> uh, and I did a lot of crowds a lot of incidentals mm -hmm. um basically just um a bunch of fun different designs that they needed so special poses turnarounds mouth charts I did a few of those oh cool uh -huh. um yeah and new characters that came up, I would draw some of those too. Awesome. And would you have to color those characters or would you just do nope. the, the line drawings? Yeah. So okay. I could turn in roughs or line drawings. I typically were pretty clean. So I did a lot of uh, just line versions. Yeah. Okay, cool. And this is going to be a very, very, very nerdy question. But mm -hmm. were, were brushes already provided to you when like you when you started because obviously like each each show has a specific style where you already provided with brushes and like did people show you how to use them or did you just kind of have to like okay well these are the brushes of the show like I guess I just have to use them I'm curious because that's something I don't hear about often that's, yeah that's a really good question actually because that was something I was freaked out by mm -hmm. um so yes I already knew what the brush was um since I was a production coordinator I had to oftentimes give that out to people like new artists that were starting so I was really familiar with the, the pack of brushes mm -hmm. I think I was intimidated initially because we have like huge packs of brushes but it's because they're mostly for like the painters for BGs and stuff so I was like which brushes do I have to use I only had to use one <laughs> awesome. so that was a good thing um the line weight was pretty important to the showrunner, so I had to keep that pretty consistent, which wasn't very hard, um, but it's something that came up um, often if it didn't, like, really work with the scene, so you had to I had to really be mindful mm -hmm. of that, like, if it was a close-up shot or mm -hmm. um, 
farther away he liked it to be like a little bit thicker but not too mm -hmm. thick <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah and then uh yeah it was just one brush provided but I actually went and got my own giant Cintiq to work on from home yeah. so we're working from home at the time so mm -hmm. I think that was the thing that was most nerve-wracking for me because I hadn't worked on a Cintiq since school so oh, I think yeah. when I got I think I hadn't been on a Cintiq since 2018 and I got uh -huh. a character design job in 2020 so wow Ooh. And yeah. were, you, were you just using your iPad at the time or were you using just, like another? Yeah, just my iPad. You so, had some kind of plugin, right? To allow Photoshop to show up on your iPad. Was that what you were using? I, uh, I can't I remember. Was, I was using Procreate. So yeah. I hadn't used to Photoshop. Shout out before. to Procreate. Not a <laughs> yeah. sponsor, but shout out. Oh I was my just God. using that's Procreate. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And so I, I'm curious, how was the adjustment from using procreate to then hopping hopping back into the cintiq was do you feel like the um, transition was easy or was it was it bumpy it was a little bumpy because i'm so used to like my ipad being small and i could just twist the screen so mm -hmm. i kept trying to go like this like rotating it and doing the keyboard memory with my hand was really yeah. oh <laughs> it was tricky I gotcha. but yeah at least i was only drawing line so yeah um that was pretty easy gotcha and and this is going to be Kind of, I have two more questions for you because I know we're almost we're almost at time. Um, okay. Uh, this one, I mean, again, I feel like this is a question that kind of is having more and more relevance considering how there's other platforms and ways to learn, right? Mm -hmm. uh, art. Um, do you feel that um, what you learned in school helped you to get to this point um, in in character design, or do you feel like school is like a supplemental thing? Like, for example you learn stuff in school, but then you learn stuff elsewhere. Like how do you feel like that was school was helpful or do you feel like there are other ways that other things that you use or other platforms you use to learn how to get better at character design? I know that's a I big question, but. No, um, no, no, not at all. Um, no, I think school was super helpful for me, especially cool. since um, character designing and just like making cartoons, which is what I was doing mm -hmm. just like for fun. Um, was super super different like you really have to think about um the production's needs when you're designing um and like doing a turnaround i'd never done a turnaround before <laughs> so oh. um yeah, I, was, yeah. Like, I didn't i didn't know which angles it needed i didn't know like a five point turn was standard yeah um, yeah things like that and uh a lot of professors helped me push expressions a lot more mm -hmm. um knowing what was animation friendly was really helpful because i i used to like put like boils and wrinkles everywhere on designs so, oh yeah oh yeah like, i remember that yeah learning to simplify and draw back was a big mm -hmm. big thing for me too yeah um yeah but like those essentials for character design is really um what i learned in school uh -huh. and making a, a good portfolio mm. for a tv friendly animation friendly um world yeah. was was an important learning experience for me so yes i would say school is beneficial for me mm -hmm. um i feel like it's probably not needed for everybody mm -hmm. um as far as me honing in on my character design skills i'd say yeah awesome definitely definitely don't regret cool school. right on and uh i lied i have two more questions after that um <laughs> so what advice would you give oh, no 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 don't sleep no 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 please do, 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 don't make me look bad no, i'm just kidding it's all good wait no. oh. equal powers <laughs> gotta readjust i <laughs> can't see you <laughs> you just disappear real eagle powers in action oh shit no that my my my, my earphones don't extend that way um no. uh what would you what would what advice would you give to um, aspiring character designers? Like what, what, what little tidbits of advice would you give to anybody wanting to pursue what, what you're doing? I would say don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, definitely give yourself grace in the fact that things will come your way um, as far as design gigs and jobs and um, also to have fun with your characters study stuff that inspires you even if mm. it's not like cartoon related 
-hmm. like if you see i don't know like mighty one's main character is a rock if you see a rock on the side of the road and you're like that would look cute with a face on it Mm -hmm. then draw a rock with a face on it and draw it at a couple different angles um and if you're feeling like you're in an art slump or anything like that which happens a lot more than you think Mm -hmm. um just like give yourself a break and it's okay to take a break yeah. every once in a while because sometimes designing can be really overwhelming and like taking a break is the best mm-hmm. thing for you um but um also i guess getting a job into the animation industry it doesn't there's no like handbook behind it there's no story that's the same um everybody's journey is really different so you could be like me and start as an intern, get a PA job. Um, you can apply for those character design or designing roles straight out of the gate. Um, go to, we went to a lot of um, cons, like oh, art shows yep. and stuff like that. Yep. To really just like talk to people about what's your experience and how did you get into the industry? Something yep. like that was really helpful yep. for us and we all like take notes and talk about it afterwards which was super helpful yeah yeah like yeah. ctn was the first one we went to right i think that was the big one um mm-hmm. ctn's still there lightbox is another big one um that's happening this actually in october so if anyone's uh yeah. down to go there do that because it's not only like a con for illustrators and animators and concept artists but it's not like nicole said it's opportunity for you to actually like just ask people what it is that they 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 do and how they did it um yeah and people and are always very friendly everyone's super so nice friendly. not yeah. everyone but mostly everyone is super nice and, <laughs> and that that's what gets that's what gets like the the excitement levels up when you have somebody who is already in it still sharing that excitement and inspiring you like that's that's really powerful yeah sure. like nicole nicole's a great example of that like someone who's able to someone who was just like a lot of us like just aspiring artists and you know the fact not only is Nicole like great at what she does but she just has such a great attitude like Nicole you're just like yes. one of the nicest people ever but you also like know when to like get down to business right like you're you know when when it's time to get serious but also too like you're just someone that's so fun to be around Thank I feel you. like that's such a that's such a big thing like it's good to be talented but if you're not nice then like that that kind of admiration for your talent kind of diminishes a little bit at least that's what I think and the fact be nice, that y'all. Be nice. seriously be nice y'all or else <laughs> we won't be so nice and we're gonna come to your house to kick your ass you're such Miguel's guy. oh my gosh i don't know if you're nice Miguel. <laughs> i'm not I, I i've become more mean i've become more mean over the years so, hey but you know what if that's not your cup of tea i know socializing is really hard like yeah it was also really hard for us and we oh my god like we're huge extroverts i mean we, we really aren't but i know there's people that are really intimidated by that stuff so whatever makes you feel comfortable, like if sharing your artwork on a platform or just your website makes you feel comfortable, do that. If you have the opportunity to show somebody your work, if they want to see it, just do it. Like, don't don't think too much about it, like getting nervous about, oh, is it going to be good uh, enough, whatever. Yeah, Trust yeah. Me, don't, fine. I think really it's like, at least, at least for me, you... you I guess there's already those assumptions that you make in your head of like this person already thinks I'm dumb or like this person already thinks like you know that like I don't know it's, it's like easy this, to get there. it's easy to assume that whoever you're approaching is not going to want to talk to you but like that's not true just just come in and say hey I'm someone who's just interested in potentially doing what you what you're doing right now I just want to ask you a couple questions I think really it's like don't treat it as networking but treat it as just like as community building like I think that's I think that's the word I'm trying to use more often and and but again like with conventions and with just reaching out to people like i've had people reach out to me and they they do it in a way where it's respectful it's like hi my name is so and so i came across your work i really like your Mm -hmm. work i was wondering if you have time you know to just answer a couple of my questions i know if you're busy that's totally fine like navigating it that way (laughs) is perfect because really the hard truth is that no one's obligated to talk to you really you know people are doing it out of the kindness of your of their heart and if you're just if you approach it in a respectful way people are going to be more than happy to but don't knock it till you try it you know but i'll say like even for me i still get nervous but i feel like the more <laughs> i've done it the the, the easier it is for me to yes. just approach people because i've known time and time again that people are very willing to to give their time you know mm-hmm. and it just helps to 
you know, again, being social is, it, I mean, for, for us, it's, it's very nerve wracking, but um, some of the, like, I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't approach the director or approach somebody and say, Hey, can you look at my work? You know, like you have to be able to kind of bite the bullet and just go for it. Right. Even if you don't feel uncomfortable, but at the same time, like, don't, don't freak out about it and don't panic. You know, if it's not something that you're like super, super comfortable with, then, then I, I don't want to force you to do that. But um, again, you never know. And yeah, I, I think practicing is, is a good way, the yeah. best way, especially if you're like nervous or shy, because like Miguel said, the more you do it, like the more comfortable you are with it, mm -hmm. especially, I guess, a good way to start doing that, feel comfortable asking like basic questions like that is um, coffee chats is a huge yeah. thing for people in the industry. So I've had mm -hmm. students reach out to me who are just like, hey, I like want to get to know you more about kind of essentially the same mm -hmm. conversation we're having. Um, mm -hmm. which has been great. I've talked to a few people like that. Um, there's been a ton of interns that I've talked to also while I was um, working in the industry. And um, I don't know if I've done that outside of work. I think I have with a few people. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also a good stepping stone to, to message people that you that seem nice or yeah. um, that you're comfortable with on social media and be like, do you want to have a coffee chat? yeah and most of the time they'll say yeah yeah or i mean yeah. if they don't then it's okay <laughs> yeah because and again kind of kind of bookending this this interview going back to how nicole and i first met um the class that we we're in had this competitive nature and i feel like in reality the animation industry shouldn't really be like that and it kind of isn't like everybody is really supportive obviously there's a friendly friendliness to the competition but in reality people want to just cultivate everybody they we want to be able to lift people up and and say, hey, like you, you want to start off? We'll, we'll help you. We'll give you at least a, a bit of a boost to get you in the right direction. Yeah, that's the biggest like positive I would say I've gotten from um, designing because I think I was really intimidated to start my character design job, thinking like I'm gonna be super alone in this. Like, mm -hmm. if I make a mistake, like is that gonna be a huge slap on the wrist? Blah blah. blah. Yeah. But I I had like weekly meetings uh, with the showrunners every week and we would go over to designs and like chat about the stuff that's working and like it was super open to um improvement and continuing like the good things that you're doing and um like everybody was super supportive i don't think i ever had anybody who was like you did something wrong <laughs> yeah i, I don't <laughs> think anybody yeah destructive exactly exactly yeah. yeah so nicole one more question for you um sure. and I think this, it, the the question is a cliche. Okay, so my apologies. I know I wasn't. Sorry for not being original. Um, but if you were to go back and like tell your younger self, like either Nicole when you started junior college or Nicole when Nicole in high school, like what would you tell yourself? Like what 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 advice would you tell your younger self? Uh, or would you just be like, "Good luck, kid." <laughs> I probably would, and like joke about it, and be uh -huh. like. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I would I would probably say something cliche also it's gonna work out keep mm. keep the dream alive yeah um awesome. keep doing what you love because it's it's not where I expected to be at all I didn't think I would end up being an artist I just kept going with it because I was just like I don't know what else to do <laughs> yeah it's like I, I didn't have a a great awesome answer but um well, that's good i guess it's just like it was like a gut feeling where i was like i guess i should just keep pursuing this and yeah yeah i never really had an avenue where i was like oh this is this is a bad idea yeah. um i think i was lucky in the sense of i always had a lot of support and people telling me that uh i could pursue this as a career mm -hmm. which was great so Awesome. I would tell my younger self, keep doing what you're doing. Heck yeah. Awesome. That's so great. I love that answer because I, I feel like that's a good way to end this where it's like for anybody who's listening or for anyone who's interested in pursuing character design or any other uh, as, as facet of the industry, um, just go with your gut feeling. If you feel like this is something you want to do, go with that gut feeling and, and go for it because I feel like the two of us are examples of people who had that feeling and Again, we didn't we we couldn't predict the future, but we went with it and thankfully things worked out either because other people we, we ran into people who helped us out 
um, circumstances. And again, like, you know, we want people to thrive in this community and we want people, we want just dope people out there to just join, join the industry and, you know, contribute and make some awesome stuff. So yeah, yeah there's a lot of talented people out there. Mm -hmm. They're just waiting to spread their wings. They, uh, <laughs> spread their ego powers. Just everybody out there, just just. I didn't plan that, but that uh, was pretty good. Uh, yeah, that was that was cool. After this interview, go to Mexico, climb up a hilltop, find eagle eggs, <laughs> consume the nutrients, and then we spread your wings nutrients. and just fly. Oh, just that's true. Anyway, all right. Uh, <laughs> we'll just end it there, I guess. Nicole, um, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Again, this was super fun. And like you provided just such a wealth of information and knowledge. And um, I'm just excited to see what you do next. I mean, you're 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 an amazing person. I know that um whatever studio you go to next, uh, they're gonna they're gonna be super lucky to have you. Um actually thank where can you. people where can people find you? Like what what where can people look at your work? get to know you my bit. again my instagram um i'm gonna, I'm gonna double check what it is because i always <laughs> fear that i'm gonna give out the wrong one and everyone's gonna be like who uh, nicole horst nicole just for uh, art crypto oh sorry go ahead um <laughs> i'm so sorry go ahead. i wheezing nicole. <laughs> i'm sorry too much coffee nicole horst underscore art Okay, I'll put that. I'll put that down below. I'll I'll have my editor. <laughs> I'll have my editor Enrique do that. So yeah. Okay. okay. Are you the editor? Nicole, come on. <laughs> well, anyway, um, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, again, like give Nicole a follow. She's amazing. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this talk. I certainly did. I hope Nicole, you did too. And yeah. I would say, okay. uh, for. Yeah, everyone in SoCal, stay cool. I know that's impossible right now, but stay cool, stay crispy, and we will see you guys in the next episode, whenever that is, okay? Bear with me, all right? Bye, all. Bye, guys. Just remember, in the words of Ignacio, oh, shit, I have so many quotes, and I can't even think of one. <laughs> what else is there? Beneath the clothes, we find a man. And beneath a man, we find his nucleus. Whatever. You know what? That's it. We're done. We're done. I tried. I tried. All good. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.